other than sheer numbers, what's the biggest change from then to now on Twitter? I think just how people use the service. It is the easiest way to see what's happening in the world right now, live. And all right, what's up guys, it's Cole. Welcome back to another video. I'm really sorry for not having this out sooner, but we're finally here with the Twitter brand suicide. I'm really excited to cover this one, to be honest. Over the past year and a half, Twitter has seen a major decline. They've lost staggering amounts of money, users, and most importantly, respect. It's pushed them to desperately grab at control of online abuse, look for a buyer, and even shut down Vine just to keep themselves afloat. And there's a whole lot more to talk about, so let's dive in. Put it on my Twitter, put it on my Twitter, put it on my Twitter, whoa. We're happy to have Jack Dorsey, Twitter's co-founder and now CEO here. I sent a tweet out yesterday telling my followers that you were going to be on and asking what questions they would like you asked. There was an enormous outpouring of questions about censorship. So let me ask you point blank. Does Twitter censor the content of its users? Does it hide what it would consider inflammatory comments, whether they be social or political? Absolutely not. Twitter's always been about controls. People can follow whoever they want. And it's our job to make sure they see the most, the most important things and the, and the things that will matter to them. So the first topic we're going to jump in on is censorship. Last year as we began ramping up into the presidential race, it was clear that Twitter began to censor a lot of Trump support. They hid Trump-centric accounts and hashtags from the search page and even flat out suspended a number of Trump supporters. And though it's understandable that there were a lot of racist Trump supporters and a lot of tweets made in bad taste, the biggest problem with this is that a lot of the anti-white and anti-Trump tweets that were just as racist are still on the page today. For instance, last July, a number of cops in Dallas, Texas were gunned down while protecting a Black Lives Matter march. And Twitter was full of really just terrible tweets, basically cheering the shooter on for shooting those cops. And Twitter basically just left them alone. On a more immediate timeline, that was a Twitter joke, Twitter's cracked down even more on bullying. They added the ability to mute specific words in your notifications, which is honestly fine. I have no problem with that. And I think people should have that kind of control over what they see, you know? S Steve Sheaves could really use that feature. Alongside this new policy, Twitter basically went nuts. They just flat out suspended a number of alt-right Twitters, like eight or nine of them just gone all at once. And they suspended my friend Deodor Anthony for this little, this little tweet right here, which was in bad taste, but there should have been some kind of warning, right? Like, I mean, he was just suspended out of nowhere. My friend Triangle Days, who's a really good artist, by the way, has been locked out of her Twitter account multiple times for calling somebody a hoe, which I don't really understand. That's not even like, I just don't understand how a platform built on speech and ideas can, you know, rest easy censoring like half of its user base. This is a recurring theme, isn't it? Just like YouTube, guess who else doesn't communicate with their users very well? Now they do tend to communicate more about updates than YouTube does. They put them on their Twitter, you know, public account and all that stuff and they actually let us know when new things are coming. However, like on their on the personal connection, they are very, very scarce. For instance, again referencing my friend Deodor Anthony who got suspended. He posted this tweet when he was a little bit drunk and he just woke up the next morning and his Twitter account was gone. He didn't get any email, any warning. He didn't even know he was suspended until he got into like the Skype chat and a bunch of people were like, Anthony, you've been suspended. Which is kind of funny to me because like I've been suspended on Twitter. Actually, it was a long time ago. It was actually in 2014, so you, no one remembers it because back then it wasn't cool to be suspended. But I just woke up one morning and I had an email that said my Twitter account was suspended for spam. But even then, they sent me an email. The only email Anthony got was when they put his account back up and they said, like, your account accidentally got flagged and suspended. We, we fixed it. I mean, where did that change? When did they stop sending emails? Some tweets when them wake up. Some tweets about them wake up. Some tweets about them bad habits. Them. Now, Twitter's a social media outlet. And social media outlets are services. And as users, we expect services to grow and change and update. And Twitter has definitely done a lot of updating in the past year. The thing is, is Twitter is notorious for adding things that nobody really likes or wants, or changing features that everyone was completely content with. Exhibit A, replacing the fave with the like. Nobody wanted that. Nobody wanted a like button instead of a fave. And there were petitions and tweets and like this huge uproar saying, bring the fave back. Or how about that terrible, ugly new design where it was like a little bit of blue on the mostly white design that nobody really liked either. The classic white on blue design just looks good. And the, the, the icon and the opening animation still haven't even changed. So now it's just inconsistent. And then this week they rolled out ranked replies. Now when you see tweets in a conversation on mobile, you no longer see the at symbols tagging names like Twitter has always had, basically. You just see like tweets in order and you see this little bitty fine print at the top says like replying to 
you know, whoever. It orders them by relevance, which ones are getting more likes, which ones have more people replying to them, and tries to help you follow conversations. I'm gonna guess it's probably also to push down all of the abusive and, and bullying comments. So at some point, Twitter will probably start using that to censor people. And on the other side of the spectrum, they never add things that people want. They didn't listen when people wanted the fave back, and they still haven't added an edit tweet function. That is probably one of the most requested features on Twitter. Like seriously, just look up the phrase edit tweet in the Twitter advanced search box and then just read all of the tweets underneath there. Check out this little conversation between uh, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey and some other guy on Twitter. Jack basically posted a tweet and he made a typo and this other dude screenshots the tweet and says Jack could have used some sort of tweet edit feature here and Jack just replies, yep, just just yep, that's it. Mr. Jack, do you have any response to the allegations that your website is going downhill? Yep, what a perfect segue into into Jack. Whoo! Some tweet about the brands, them shoes and all of them pants. Some tweet about them on So enter Jack Dorsey, Twitter's current CEO. He's been the CEO since about uh, August or September of last year when the former CEO Dick Costolo stepped down and uh, he's well he, he, he picked the stock up a little bit and then he just kind of stomped it right back into the ground. Users under him are really unhappy. Uh, a lot of the censorship and the like replacing the fave that was all that was all under his guidance. A lot of people don't like Jack. But did you guys know he actually has been fired before from Twitter? Jack actually came up with the original idea for Twitter. So when the company started taking off, he was put up in charge. A great book to reference is Hatching Twitter, written by Nick Bilton. Basically, it paints Jack as a bad manager. He would poorly handle criticism, take credit for everything, go out and like party and do like all these extra activities like sewing and stuff when he should have been working on Twitter. Not to say he didn't deserve his own personal time, but the problem is he would do a lot of this stuff on work time when he really should have been fixing Twitter's outages, for instance, which were very common back then. Eventually, it got so bad that they fired him. They straight up fired him from his CEO position because he was running Twitter into the ground. And Evan Williams, the, one of the first guys to help fund Twitter when it got started, took his place. Jack was given a passive chairman and a silent board seat, which basically means he wasn't even really an employee anymore. It's reported that after that he actually went, and I quote, rogue. He went out and he started Square, that little business, you know, the, the little card readers that you swipe, for instance, when you buy cookies from the Girl Scouts at the store. Yeah, Jack started that. The dude basically recreated his whole image and based himself off of like Steve Jobs, quoting Gandhi and starting a company after he was fired from his own company the same way, you know, Steve Jobs started Pixar after he got fired from Apple. And then he started planting these little media rumors that he was like the sole visionary behind Twitter and started plotting to get his seat back from Evan Williams. He began a little whisper campaign within the board and eventually it worked. He freaking got Evan Williams fired. Williams was replaced by Dick Costolo in 2010, and Jack was given an executive chairman seat, basically back in the company. Now, Dick Costolo did a lot in his five-year run for Twitter. He brought revenue up from literally nothing to two billion a year. He raised the number of employees from 300 to 4,100. He even rebuilt the Twitter website to fix all of its terrible crashes. The problem with Dick Costolo was that he didn't have the vision. He couldn't advance the service, move it forward, bring it into relevancy, and over the course of 2015, it started to stagnate. People inside and outside of Twitter began hating on him hard, and eventually the pressure was just too much. He didn't want to be the CEO anymore so he just straight up stepped down. He quit and guess who the interim CEO was? Jack. Which terrified a lot of people. Like I'm not kidding. People cried when they found out Jack was going to be CEO again. Here's what that might have looked like. I know she Now the thing that baffles me is after everything Jack has done, he's just bumped up to CEO again. Investors like his vision. I gotta say, the guy's ambitious. He's made a lot of changes to Twitter. And for instance, moments, I actually like moments. But at the same time, I feel like we've forgotten about everything he's done. Censorship, not changing the likes back to favorites, even after the entire website uproared and begged him to put it back. I mean, doesn't that seem like some qualities of the old Jack still showing through? I mean, when they asked the company as Jack was interim CEO, if he would stay, the company said probably not. Not. They didn't want to hire someone who could not commit fully, as in someone who was running two companies at the same time. So what changed in the middle? How did Jack just end up as the CEO all of a sudden? It was looking good for a little while. I think his vision paid off in the moments and that kind of thing. But now we're getting into the censorship and all this and Twitter's starting to decline again. And I just think that maybe, you know, Jack might not be such a good idea for CEO, at least anymore. So if you ain't no Twitter, put it on your Twitter and every time you post, post 
right, so let's talk about the money. Twitter has not made a profit since 2013. With a loss of over $500 million in 2015, Twitter's been pushed to search for a buyer and even shut down their well-loved but stagnating video platform, Vine. I'm gonna talk about Vine a little bit, but not too much because there's actually so much I could probably make an entire brand suicide video off of Vine itself. Twitter bought Vine in late 2012 from its creators for $30 million after they pitched it. They worked on it a little bit and released it in January of 2013. It quickly caught on. I remember Vine going around my school when I was in eighth grade, right when it came out, watching those Will Sasso Vines, my absolute favorite. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Unfortunately, Vine began to stagnate. They fell behind platforms such as Facebook video, Instagram, even Twitter's own video service. Not to mention Vine really never had a monetary plan. They didn't really have ads. There was no revenue coming in from Vine because its creators didn't want that. With no real money coming in and massive money losses on Twitter's side, they basically just had to cut that. And Twitter's buyer struggle is also showing a pretty similar path in the fact that it's Rather tragic. Though Jack is clearly confident Twitter can keep running itself and be independent, eventually they will run out of money. They attracted a number of interesting buyers, including Google, Apple, Salesforce, and even Disney. However, Apple and Google now seem very unlikely to buy them, and Disney, as well as Twitter's best option, Salesforce, have both backed out of the purchase. It's not looking good. Now, Twitter's never been a conventional company, always in a constant struggle between success and suck. Every CEO that's been there has been forced out by the next. It's a constant struggle for power. But lately, they've been spinning even more wildly out of control. And they've lost a lot of support from veteran users. I, myself, find myself telling friends to skip Twitter when we talk about what social media sites to sign up for. And I'm not really sure what's gonna happen to Twitter or how it can be saved. A company with a fluctuating state of crisis since its creation just can't be diagnosed or really helped the way another problem might be fixed. You know, Twitter could sink or float at this point. They've lasted this long, they could last longer. Or this might be the end for Twitter. It's really hard to tell because every once in a while they do have that ability to just bounce back up. A new buyer could possibly help fund Twitter and keep them going a little bit longer. A new CEO might be able to make some changes or on the other side no one may buy Twitter they may run out of money it's really just anyone's game dude but one thing is for sure Twitter can definitely live up to the words I've been dying since day one but y'all knew that anyway guys thank you for watching this video I do hope you enjoyed I'm sorry for taking so long but as I said before this has just been an incredibly tough couple weeks for me don't forget to leave a comment tell me your thoughts and I will see you guys in the next video take it easy